Hello everybody and welcome to Andrew Broussard Watercolors. Today this uh, video is going to be a response to a patron question from my Patreon. Uh, she's been having trouble painting waves. So uh, last week we did a video comparing the different blues that we can utilize for water. Some mixtures to kind of warm it up, to kind of darken it, to play with shadows. Today I'm going to look at textural effects that can possibly utilize to paint waves because honestly waves are something that I really haven't added to my repertoire and they're really really common in watercolor paintings so it's something that I should learn how to do and something that um, I think you all would want to learn how to do so we're gonna kind of go through a whole bunch of different things and I'll kind of list it off kind of the plan and it's gonna be just experimental and Anything you learn from this will be kind of the same exact thing I'm learning in the moment. So I have some salt, and this is kind of coarse kosher salt. My um, fiance just bought some yesterday, so that was like perfect. Uh, don't tell her I took her salt. <laughs> Please don't tell her I took the salt. I have um, a razor blade where if you're watching this, of course, if you're a kid, be careful with stuff like that. And if you're an adult, of course, be careful with it because razor blades are sharp. And we'll see how uh, textural scraping effects with a razor blade will affect it. I have this brush that I'm going to try to apply uh, the misket frisket with. Um, and we'll see how that works, kind of leaving the white of the paper. I do have the fine line uh, resist, which is essentially the same thing. We could just apply it as dots, and it's more controlled. I have the mini mister. This is filled with water. I should have filled it with rubbing alcohol. That's something that can get textural effects as well. Um, if need be, that's a video I could film down the line. And we have gouache and we could experiment with splattering that. So a lot of fun different stuff to play around with. Um, let me know in the comments what you guys utilize. Uh, who is your favorite painter for uh, following uh, watercolor tutorials for um, waves and whatnot. I'd love uh, for the other viewers to see down below what other options they have. I mean, as much as I want you guys to watch my channel, I want you guys to learn. That's the main focus of these videos. And I want to learn as well. Oh, and last but not least, we have a Jelly Roll gel pen kind of dotted in there. So we'll start with the frisket which I rarely use. And speaking of other artists, um, Rick S, if you just go into Google or YouTube and type in Rick S, he has phenomenal uh, paintings and he'll start off with a masking fluid. I'm not sure if my fluid should be that color. I don't even know if I could splatter it. Let's see. Take that. You don't want to use it on your regular brush because it can ruin it. Do I need to water this down? Let's do that as an experiment. Put some water in here. I'm going to have to wash this good. You all remind me to wash this good. I don't know. Okay, that's just dripping. I'm not getting the fine mist splattering that I want, but like I said, this is something I'm just uh, not adept at. Every time I try it, I have trouble. See if I run my finger along the edge, if anything will happen. Okay, we're getting small, fine little dots. How that'll come up at the end, we'll see. So kind of a messy approach, but if you're a hands-on painter, try it out and we'll see what that looks like when we lift at the end. So let's put the, this demon bottle away. <laughs> clean this guy after the video. 
All right, so while that dries, we can play with our fine liner. And we'll do a more controlled pattern or a controlled application. I don't use these tools often, and this one had went for two years without gunking up. It has a little um, piece of metal that goes in that top to keep it from drying in there. Oh, there we go. Okay. So obviously, I'm not struggling as much with that application as the previous. So I hope you all got a good laugh out of that. I think the last time we utilized this was um, New Year's. We were playing with different approaches for fireworks. Okay. And the main goal is uh, just to see how we can bring out the whites for a sea foam and mist and whatnot. So I'm going to put this away. While those two dry, we'll experiment with our other approaches. And again, the whole idea is kind of texture and what works for you all. Let's put this up here. There. Okay. Let's kind of focus on just ultramarine blue. I'm not gonna do too much color variation. Let's do salt effect. So salt is a common texturing technique. And I think what would be fun, and I'll probably do a video of kind of a time-lapse countdown and add salt every minute or so, so you can see the different effects at different drying times. Okay, so I'm just gonna sprinkle salt directly on it. let that salt dry. Well, the, the painting dry. Okay, let's put this out in a way where the cats can't knock it over. What do we have next? Let me get the salt removed. We will let that sit for a little bit. I'll let the mini mister in a few. Let's um, do another line of that. We'll have to wait as well for, we could wash splatter wet and wet. How about we do that? Uh, let's see. We'll do a gouache splatter wet and wet, and then we'll do a gouache splatter uh, dry. Grab a big old brush, soak it up. This is the silver black velvet small jumbo. Nothing is splattering. There we go. Okay, so I need quite a bit of water in that mixture for that to happen. Okay. I'll sit this guy off to the side. Let's see what else we had. We need a blue area to dry for the razor blade. And then we'll do a blue area for um, 
the gouache when it's dry. And then we'll do a blue area for our um, jelly roll pen. Okay, so tons of options, tons of fun things to play around with. So I'm gonna stop the camera because I need this to dry off before we go any further. And let's see and make sure we have everything covered. Okay, so I did a pretty aggressive dry off, but I wanted to start labeling these guys. This is salt in wet. I dried this off and I forgot to do the mini mister, so I'll do another um, area for that. So this was wet in wet gouache. Let me make sure I'm spelling it right. Splatter. This was splatter uh, misket. Is it IT? Yep, it is. This is dabbling in our um, fine line resist. Here we are going to splatter gouache. This will be razor blade. This will split in half. This will be jelly roll. I think they spell it with a G. Yep, they do. Pen. This. This one I'll re wet. Ooh, we'll do, we'll wet this, and this will be dry mini mister. I think that covers everything. This guy is still drying off. That's, uh, I think, why I'm, I don't use the, um, the, the, uh, the resist, the masking fluid that often, because it just, um, it's just the, the time that I draw, and it just, uh, takes too long. Okay, so jelly roll pen. Let's see how well it shows up over it. Is it showing up in the camera? I honestly don't think it is. I've used it in paintings in the past over darker blue, uh, darker paint. So why don't we go ahead and allow some dark to come in. And we'll try that in a bit. Okay, very cool accidental effect. That was Payne's Gray that I passed over. And you can see here, here, and here that I had um, used the jelly roll and it kind of acted as a resist in those spots. So I did not know that that was possible. And here's the jelly roll over a darker pigment. Okay. There's that. Okay. Uh, dry mini mister. Let's see how that is. Oh. I think it's just such a re-wetting that um, I think it would need to be a finer mist or maybe have rubbing alcohol in the spray. I personally don't see that as a viable option for me, the Mini Mister for water dry and dry. If you want to wet the area and lift, let's see that. Okay, wet the area. Yeah, if we need to bring some light out to it, that, that is a possibility. 
here was re-wetting and spraying with the mini mister so we could get wet and wet. It may really depend on the bottle itself to get a kind of a spray effect. So it's something for you all to think about and to play with different spray bottles. We did the wet and wet wash, which had a relatively interesting effect, but now we need to do our splatter over the dry, which I think will have a better effect. Unfortunately, since I have all these spots cordoned off, that might um, hold me back from uh, really splattering good. We'll give that guy a moment to dry. I apologize if this video is all over the place, but like I said, this is all me learning as well. Okay, razor blade. Let's uh, hold it flat to it. Yeah, we're pulling out kind of the texture of the paper. That might be a possibility. The edge. Paper cuts. Honestly, so far this seems the most versatile, but it is obviously the most damaging to the paper. Is this guy dry yet? Nope, it is not. Let me do a pause and a little bit more drying. Okay, so um, my impatience with uh, frisket is, hopefully it plays off, it pays off. Okay, and here's when we did the dots. Okay. Let's see, is there anything else we need to do before the last dry off? No, there is not. All right, so we'll use this stage to remove the salt. So I have a soft, well, now this is more of a bristle brush, but I think any type of brush would work. And this is the coarse salt. You can probably see how big the chunks are. Let's tilt that off to the side. I'm not going to clean this off because we're about to remove the masking fluid. Masking fluid, I got an eraser we can use to remove that. I'm gonna have to hold this up close to the camera because the um, the very last aspect of this when I had wet put it wet and then I ran my finger over the toothbrush and got the very fine um, splatters they are showing through really well and I'll be honest I'm a little bummed at how well it's working because I think you have heard quite a bit about my bias against uh, masking fluid <laughs> and I apologize for that but this is all in the name of a science sharing information helping out other artists and, um, and having fun Good. Let's wipe this off. I'm going to take a look at everything. We'll take a look. We'll start with the masking fluid. I'm going to hold it close to the screen. I'm going to try to not hurt your eyes. And you can see all those little fine white dots. 
that I think would really help with the spot splattering. So if you just kind of were painting a wave and you set up something behind when you splatter to kind of keep it from going all over the painting or if you want to set it a little bit into the sky, I think that's the best option right off the bat. Um, the liner masking fluid, it's very, um, has a very human element to it. And I think if you were kind of edging and filling out a wave, that's where that would be the most beneficial. So if you were kind of doing the big portion of a white of a wave, but if you want to find mist from the wave, the splatter with the finger running over the toothbrush. Salt, it gets used a lot for different aspects. Um, like I said, this was kind of the coarser salt, so there might be different effects you can get from different salts. Um, but it, it's cool, it doesn't bring out the white of the paper, but it brings out a texture. I'm not quite sure if I would use that for water. We'd have to see. The jelly roll impressed me. Uh, with the first application over the blue, I wasn't really getting much to show up, and I applied the Payne's gray, and you can see right there where I had done a little bit of the jelly roll, and it came through and acted as a resist a little bit. So that was cool. And that was the jelly roll on top. The mini mister helped if we wanted to kind of just lift up an area, whether it was re wet or um, over dry. Uh, unfortunately, I think it's just the property of the spray bottle itself. You might need something that kind of just splattered a little bit while it sprayed. The wet and wet gouache has a cool effect. The splatter gouache is over dry, definitely stands out more. Um, there may be a way to use like a toothbrush in the same aspect here and get that finer like we did. Um, if you have an extra, I guess, eyeliner or makeup brush, you could probably use that. And the razor blade was definitely the most damaging to the paper. Um, it did have a variety of textures that you could pull out with it. That's when we laid it flat and pulled it, and this was when I was scraping with the edge. So, in conclusion, I think that the best option, that guy right there, and the gouache, so we'll see. I'm going to start looking at, that sounded very boudet. I apologize for that. Boudet is a Cajun slang for um, depressed. I didn't mean to sound depressed when I said that. Um, the splatter here seemed to be the best. This seemed to be work really well. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments down below. What do you utilize? Um, what do you think should be done differently? And like I said in the beginning, uh, mention some artists that you like to watch that do demos of waves and whatnot so we could also direct people in that direction. So I hope you enjoyed. Once again, please like, subscribe, follow. And if you enjoy this content and want to support the channel, um, I have a Patreon and other type of links down below where you can easily uh, donate to help support. Okay, you all have a great day.